lovely to see you here. Welcome to everybody online who's watching from home or the park or wherever you're watching from. We're glad you're here today. Wow, have we had a great week, everybody? Okay, put your hands up if you have a great week. Okay, that's a good sign. What about a hmm, not so good week? Okay, we can't see those because we've got those down. What about hmm, okay week? Yeah. Well, there's lots and lots happening around the world, isn't there? Lots of positive things going on, lots of not so good things around. Um, but, you know, we believe in a God that is in control. And I'm excited today that we get to talk about that Jesus is the way. And we've got some special things that we'd like to share with the kids coming up firstly today. And then we're hopefully going to have an amazing testimony one of the really cool things that is happening in our church is that we have a lot of people who are committing their hearts to Jesus through baptism. And I believe one is happening this afternoon. One happened last night, uh, which we're going to hear an amazing testimony next week. Uh, I'm going to keep that one under wraps. And we're going to have our commitment day next week for those that have had a profession of faith. Uh, to be baptised and to have a new life in Jesus again. So that's a really ex exciting part of what our church is doing and we're glad you're part of it. So I've got a special video for the kids coming up right now and after that we're going to be doing some actions and we're going to watch a video and do the way, the truth and the life. But first we're going to find out about a map and a journey that we go with Jesus and that it's an everyday journey, not just a one-off, but an everyday journey. So let's check this video out. In God's true book, the Bible, Jesus uses pictures to tell us seven great things about himself. They all start with the words, I am. Here is the sixth picture. Jesus said, I am. And the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. God is amazing. He made the stars and the planets. He made the world and everything in it, including you and me. God made us to be with him. But because we chose to walk away from him, God's true book tells us it is like being lost. I got lost once. It was really scary. All I wanted was to be back with my dad again. And that is what life is like now. We need to be back with God again. We need to not be lost anymore. Now, I'm going to draw you something. Can you tell me what this is? Any guesses? That's right, it's a map. Sometimes people use maps to get to places. Pirates use it to get to treasure. Weather people use maps to explain the weather. And I use maps when I go out driving. Maps are really important. When Jesus says he is the way, it's like he's saying he is the map. He is the only place we can go to get to God. But what if the map lied? What about if it told me to turn left instead of right? What if my map lied? That would be a really big problem. But Jesus says that he is the map that tells the truth. When someone tells the truth, we can trust them, can't we? That is what Jesus means when he says he is the way and the truth. But what about the life? Imagine that at the end of your map, you were going to find the best treasure. Everything you ever wanted, it was going to make you so happy. That is what Jesus means by life. When we say sorry to God, we believe in Jesus and follow him as our king then we become part of God's amazing family. And that is a family that we get to be with forever. That is good news. Jesus said, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. Now I wonder if today, to help you remember this, you could make your own map, maybe of where you live. Make sure to put some nice treasure at the end of the route to help remind you that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, and that no one gets to God except through him. Good morning, everybody, and a special welcome to the little people in our congregation. Raise your hands very high if you're a little person. There's some big people pretending. If you are a little person, you have permission to come down the front today, so I want to see you make your way as fast as you can right down the front, and make sure that we have our aeroplane arms out so that we're nowhere near each other. Aeroplane arms, aeroplane arms. You don't have to be in a line, guys. You don't have to be in a line. Okay, now I want you to turn around and look at me. Okay, now we are going to do some actions today. Big people, if you want to do the actions, watch out for the person next to you because you might smash somebody. Okay, here we go. We're going to go. I am the way. What do you think a W looks like? If you were to make a W out of your hands, what would it look like? Out of your arms, what would it look like? All right, I'm going to give it a go. Ready? Okay. That's for way. So when the song goes, I am the way, what do you do? Let's give it a try. I am the way. Good. Anyone else out here? I am the way. Yes. The truth. Are we ready for the video, Mr. A.B.? Your seats. Wow. 
I'd like to have some of that energy. Well, I hope you've had a good week. If you're visiting today, we welcome you here. My name is Pastor Mike, and uh, myself and Lockie are the two pastors here with a great team of lots and lots of volunteers. Do you guys know what this week is? This week has been Volunteer Week, and I would just like to say thanks to our many volunteers to contribute um, each week, but throughout the week as well, because to have a church, especially as we grow, it requires lots and lots of volunteers to help. And, you know, the, the amount of work that goes into just making a program happen and the coordinating that and the music and the practice and the guest services and all uh, the leaders of the different um, uh, life groups and the children's groups. Um, and then during the week, the, the lawns have to be mowed, the garden has to be kept up, you know, the building has to be cleaned. You know, there's so much that we rely on. And, you know, the church is really um, what it is because of all the people that contribute. So I'd like to say a big thank you. Last weekend was a really big one. Um, those that were here last week can probably relax a little bit today. We got breathing spaces. Last week we were chalkers, and um, we had actually there's seven churches here on the Gold Coast that came together here. And so it was a bit, bit crowded, and we had a big day. But, uh, you know, I just would like to thank all those that really worked extra hard last week to make the regional day happen as we hosted it. And a special thanks to those who actually fed 350 plus people. Um, and, and that was a huge task. And I don't know if Vanessa and Alicia are here. I don't think I've seen Alicia. Vanessa, are you here? Um, she's left as well. But she's having a bit of a break. But you know, these guys, they worked and I know they had lots of helpers as well. And um, you know, I don't know if they've ever fed that many people, but I, th I think they did a great job. And I would like to, again, say thanks to all our volunteers. You know, as, as a church, we are the body of Christ, and we come together for one purpose, and that is our vision to draw our community into a loving relationship with Jesus. And so the first way we do that is actually to be in a loving relationship with Jesus ourselves. How many today are in a loving relationship with Jesus? Raise your hand if you are. That's awesome. And if you're not, that's okay. Don't be ashamed. But, you know, talk to someone that did raise their hand. Why, why is it you're in a loving relationship with Jesus? What difference does it make in your life? And I think you'll find that it's very powerful. It really um, gives you purpose. helps you to see that I've got meaning, that I didn't just happen by chance, that God created me, um, and that he's got a purpose for me to be here, and he's got a future for me. And that's great. We're really um, moving towards see more and more people make commitments in this church. Next week, we're calling it Commitment Week. And Commitment Week's really about us just trying to encourage and acknowledge all the people who are making commitments to Jesus Christ, you know. And whatever um, level that commitment is, maybe it's just you saying, hey, I want to learn more about Jesus. You know, that's the first step. I want to learn more about what is this Jesus guy all about? What, 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 why, why is Jesus so important? And really, he's the key. You know, without Jesus... We as a Christian church have no hope because he's, he's, he's everything to us as Christians. And Jesus came and he lived the perfect life. He died to save us all from our sins. And I'm so thankful for that. And we celebrate that. And our, our mission here is to draw our community to a loving relationship with Jesus because what he did for us, he died for us. And we want to share that. And we uh, want to make that easier and easier. Um, you know, sometimes there can be roadblocks that stops people from making commitments. And, and Lockie and I and the, the board here, we just really want to try to get rid of some of those roadblocks to encourage people to make decisions. You know, so next week we're going to see a lot, the whole service is going to be about commitments. So whether it's about baptism, maybe it's about people who have um, just made a first step commitment, or maybe coming in to join the church through profession of faith. There's going to be lots of different commitments we're going to acknowledge next week. So there's one lady I'd like to invite her up front now. Her name is Waha. Now, Waha, she's been around our church, I think, since about February. And from what I understand, Waha came into our church just because she found us on the Internet. And she was doing some Bible study. But she comes from the Middle East, I think Damascus. Is that where you're from? Just... Hello? Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Good morning, church. 
This is for you. Oh, thank you. So my name is Waha, and I'm getting baptized today. <laughs> <laughs> and this is gift for for Mike. You wanna check it out? Okay. <laughs> I don't usually get gifts at baptisms, but anyway, well. I thought if I'm going to get him wet, at least give him a towel. I can get dry when I come out of the cold water. Thank you, Wah. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's so unique. I moved to Australia. Uh, 2016, and uh, my husband at that time, who is my beautiful ex-husband now, he thought, I'm coming to Australia to get citizenship, and then I will ask him to get back. But for me, it was like one-way ticket. I'm not getting there. I'm not getting there. <laughs> it's, it's done for me. And 2017, I get the chance uh, to change my religion in uh, here in Australia. We get baptized with my little boy, Marco, in a small little village in Serbia, where I s understood absolutely not even one word, but I was in that house. And uh, now I want to renew my commitment to God and uh, to Jesus as my Savior and my Lord, and to, to be Christian and to say, I'm not the old one anymore. And um, before being Christian and knowing God and knowing who my father is, I, uh, I had a few relationships with the with a few boyfriends and I had this relationship with them before being married and I feel so guilty for that. I'm not so proud of that. So I really wanted to get baptized and to reborn and wash off all my sin and sins. And when you read in Genesis, for example, how God creates our first our first human being, Adam, and he, he molded him and created him from dust and from ground, and he made him perfect. And how he, from his rib, he creates Eva, our first mother, that makes you look at your body in a different way. Like before, I didn't really treat my body as a temple of my soul. And it's now I look to even the lines in my hands in different way. I know who I am. I I born to be perfect. I'm the child of God. I am who who said I am. And I know that my father's my father really loved me and he really cares about me. Amen. <laughs> and <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I was searching in churches, like I wanted to find church um, close to my place. And I remember I saw, I get to, to the seven day church before I believed that the Sabbath, I should be at home, light a candle, no cooking, do nothing, just worship God. And then I, I saw your church, and God said, remember the Sabbath and make it holy. And uh, I, um, I saw online service with uh, Charles Mabula. I hope I say his name good. And he was uh, preaching here, and he was praying for his sister. And uh, I, I wish, I thought it's really, I thought it's so powerful to, uh, to really engage everyone and ask everyone to pray. And in my baptism today, I am seeking God's perfect presence and spirit to, to, to pour on me. If you can make it there, two o'clock in the spit, that would be perfect. If you can't, I really wish that you pray with me, if you allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for, for grace. 
Thank you for your angelic protection. Please, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Please, Father, set me free. Father, there is no power like your power. You know how, how long I was fighting. You know my pain. You know how I lay in the night and how I wake up. God, I'm calling upon you. I'm calling upon your angels to come and fight by my side. Father, I ask you to remove all my old faith from my life. Father, you open the sea, you move the mountain, you raise the dead. There is nothing impossible for you. I ask you today here in your house to move Isa and all the people who hurt me in the past and hurt my family. Move them away of me, of my child, of my house, of my family, and surround me with your grace, with your perfect presence, God. I ask you this by Yeshua name, the Lord Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was beautiful. You know, it's all about us repenting. All of us have sinned, and that's what it's all about. You know, that's the message we want to give the world, that God's grace is for all of us, and it covers all of our sins, and you begin a new life. And that's what baptism is all about. And so today, too, I know there's a lot of other things happening today, and I apologize, there's conflicts. But if you are free, you're welcome to come. It's just past the um, Sea World. You are past Sea World. There's a little roundabout there as the boat ramp comes back in, and then just past that on the left is a little parking area. So just past Sea World on the left is where the baptism will be at two o'clock today. Now, Waha, we're just really excited about you joining our church family, and uh, she's, you know, made this commitment. We've been through a lot of things, but, you know, what I'm so touched about is, is her excitement. She actually showed up in Easter, wanted to get baptized then, and I said, listen, I just need to kind of go over some things first. So we've been putting this off for a while. It's one reason we're doing it this week, not next week, because she's just keen, and, and what a wonderful thing. And we do want to make it easier for people here in this church to get baptized, because it shouldn't be something that's dragged out for six months. If you make a decision for baptism, sure, you're going to be joining our church, and I'd love to go through as quickly as we can what we believe. I believe what we stand for as a church is biblically sound in doctrines, but we don't want to hold off for you to, you know, have to know the Bible inside out to get baptized. It's a simple decision that I accept Jesus and uh, repent of my sins and his death, his burial, and his resurrection for me. And so we're glad you've done that. She shared with me yesterday as we're studying, you know, in her country, by making a decision like this, she could be put to death. You know, we're so fortunate to live in a country where we have the freedom. We have the freedom to be Christians. And, um, you know, again, a good reason for us not to put off making commitments. So, Waha, I'm just so glad you're making this decision. We look forward to you being baptized. She has signed um, the three promises we're calling them. And they are, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and I desire to live my life in a saving relationship with Him. I accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the Statement of Fundamental Beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I pledge by God's grace to live my life in harmony with these teachings. And lastly, I desire to be baptized as a public expression of my belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward in my personal influence, ties, and offerings, and life of service. So those are the three promises she's made. We're so proud of you. We're so looking forward to your baptism. And I'd just like to ask the church today, subject to our baptism at 2 o'clock today, do you guys accept her into membership? Let's, yeah, do it by clapping your hands. Welcome to our church family, Waha. We love you. God loves you. And we look forward to this afternoon. There's your certificate. And there's a little gift for you. I don't have a towel, so I hope you have your own. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Waha. And that leads us to the next thing in our service today. It's our, our opportunity for all of us to worship God by giving. 
You know, we have different ways we give. We give of our time, and that was what I talked about earlier. All of us as volunteers, you know, giving a bit of our time really helps to make a church happen and helps us to do the mission God's called us to do. But we also need to um, support financially uh, to keep a church running and paying the bills and support the different ministries. So our local church offering is going to be collected now, and I would just ask you to bow your heads as we pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, the wonderful uh, country we live in where we're, many of us are very blessed. Lord, uh, help us to be generous. Help us to um, not be living a life of scarcity, but we will be li- living lives that are generous lives. And so as we have this opportunity to give, we pray you will bless us and bless the tithes and offerings as they're collected. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there, there will be um, an opportunity to give, but you can always give online through the, uh, the app or the website. Now we have an opportunity to worship our God and Creator. So if you can please raise to your feet this morning. We're going to sing about how Jesus is our way maker. He is our map. He is the only way to reach eternal life and to go back to the source, go back to where it all began and go back to that breath of life and that moment of creation.
working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see that you're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working.
Let's pray together, church. Thank you, Father, for this moment that we can come, we can worship you, and we can praise you. Lord, we make that claim. Lord, we want to believe it, that you are enough for us, Lord. And so it's not just our song, it is our cry today, Lord. May you be all we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much, worship team. Can we give them a huge round of applause just to say thank you for leading us today? So good to, to be able to come together and worship. Um, I don't know about you, but it's, it's definitely been a week for me. Uh, it's had its ups and downs, and you kind of come to the Sabbath, and you're like, okay, I just need to take a deep breath, you know, just reset and pause and remember um, what this day is all about. And I'm just so grateful that we can do this today, that we can come together, we can worship together, we can lay aside all that's happened in the past week at the foot of the cross and just say, Jesus, thank you for your goodness. And we can just bask in that and embrace it together. And it's so beautiful. And um, you're just so grateful to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. I want you to turn to the person next to you, and I want you to guess the pronunciation of this word. This is a Greek word, and I want you to guess how it's pronounced. It's not pronounced the way. That's a, that's a, that's a hint. <laughs> Who wants to shout out a guess? How's this word pronounced? The way of the cross. Hey? Olos? Hodos. Oh, okay. How about over here? Ojos. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's definitely a choice. Caleb, what do you reckon, mate? All right, some very good guesses. The correct, the connect, the correct pronunciation, see what I did there? That wasn't even intentional. The correct pronunciation of this word is hodos. Hodos. So why don't you turn to the person next to you and say hodos. Hodos. And what that word means is right below it there. It means the way. And this year as a church, you might have seen some people walking around with wristbands like this or hats. Um, usually the Ong boys rock them, so I love it. It's great. But it says walking the way, and that is our theme this year as a church, walking the way. And as we talk about the way, what we're referring to is what is the Greek word, which is hodos, and it means the way, right? And, and we see this word all over the, the Bible. It, it appears all the time. But because it, they're such simple words, uh, we can often skim over it and, and miss what the word means. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to unpack a bit of what this word means and we're hopefully going to come to a conclusion that points us to Jesus, right? And we're going to see how Jesus interacts with this idea of the way and what it means for our lives today. So before that, I have a question that I need you to, to answer for me. It's a very important question, a very serious question, uh, because I need help, okay? So the question is going to appear on screen. I want you to yell out your answers. What should you take when you go hiking? I need help with this. Water, food, very important. What else? Hiking boots, yes, Jesse. 
You can do it. Hiking stick. Yes, I once hiked with those. It was amazing until I got some blisters. Yeah, Caleb. Hiking bag. Yes, a backpack. Yeah. Compass. A sleeping bag and a mat. Yes, if you ever do a Pathfinder camp and it's more than one day, a sleeping bag and a mat are very, very good things to bring. There's one... Someone who knows the way. Yes. That would be helpful for me when I go hiking, definitely. Ryan, what do you reckon? Sorry? Rope. Yes, definitely. You never know how often rope is going to come in handy. How about over here? Last one. Yeah, last one. Tent. Yes. Right. It's great if you've if you got a, a sleeping bag and a mat, but if you don't have a tent, it might get a bit cold or a bit wet at night. Thanks for sharing, guys. I'm going to share a hiking story with you right now, and I took barely any of those things on this hike, okay? That's why I said I needed help, because I need to be better at hiking. I have way too many bad hiking stories that I'm not proud of. But this one took place uh, a few months ago. It took place in March of this year. And March of this year, I went to a place called Jindabyne, to the Adventist Alpine Village. Um, and the owners of the place said, whenever you uh, bring up AAV, you have to say, AAV, place to be. Okay, so that's just part of my contract with the church. Um, AAV, place to be. If you go into the snow, go check it out. It's right near Threadbow there. So, um, beautiful place there. But we went down there for interns camp this year. And all the interns in the Adventist Church in Australia, we get together every two years. Um, so this was like the chance I had to go. And, and you, you spend a week getting training, um, catching up with a bunch of your classmates, learning a bit more about um, what the kind of expectations are around internship and stuff like that. It was a great experience. Um, and we went there. And while we were there, someone had the bright idea that we should at some point in the week climb Mount Kosciuszko. It's only about 40 minutes away. And for those who don't know, Mount Kosciuszko is the highest point in Australia. And they thought, you know, it would be great if we could climb Mount Kosciuszko together. And someone piped in after that and said, oh, we should do it on Sabbath. We haven't got anything on that day. Let's do it on Sabbath. And someone else, and this is where I think the idea got a bit worse, they said, let's do sunrise on top of Australia on Sabbath. But by that point, the idea had gained so much momentum that that was the decision that was landed on. <laughs> and um, I was one of like, the youngest ones there. And so like, I kind of felt a bit obliged to go with it because there were some people a lot older than me that were doing it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, we're going to have to go for this. We're going to do it. Um, and I'd climbed Mount Kosciuszko once before after Camp Rhea a few years ago, and I had all the proper gear, and it was a pretty good experience. It was during the day, so it was really nice. But um, as we started to think through and plan out this hike, I started to get more and more concerned because um, we realized that like, with the wind chill factor on top of Australia, uh, the morning we were going to go, it was predicted to feel like minus four degrees. Um, I'd, I kind of took clothes like this, to like to interns camp and I took like one set of shorts and a shirt and stuff um, I took like some some shoes that weren't designed for hiking um, and I wasn't exactly equipped for this hike but pride got the better of me and I decided we would go for it anyway and uh, we ended up getting to a place called Charlotte's Pass at about 4 a.m. that morning because sunrise was happening at about 6 and we had a nine kilometer hike uphill ahead of us and um, there was kind of loose rocks all the way up, and it wasn't the most comfortable on your feet, even if you do have hiking shoes. And I was in these shoes that weren't great at all. But when we got to the top, this was the view that we had. How amazing is that? So that's the view on that Sabbath morning from the top of Australia. It was, it was incredible. Uh, I've got a picture of myself up the top. Um, does that look like the face of someone who's having a great time? <laughs> it's like, force the smile, force the smile, make it look like you're happy. Uh, this was the whole group of us that did it. So you can see I, I managed to acquire some ski pants. I'm wearing about 17 layers. Um, I've got some gloves as well. Great thing about being at a ski place is that sometimes people leave stuff there, so I managed to borrow a bit of stuff, and it was okay. But I want to draw your attention to one particular part of this photo, and that part is my feet. Now, on my feet, you will see some shoes, and they're called Nike Metcons. This isn't a plug for Nike, but this is what the Nike Metcon looks like. Uh, these shoes are designed for like being like doing like gym work, like on like a softer surface, you know, doing weight training, stuff like that. Um, as you can see, heel support is virtually non-existent in these shoes. Uh, they're not designed for long walking, let alone hiking, let alone hiking uphill, let alone hiking uphill at 4 a.m. in the morning where you can't see and you hike on loose gravel. Um, I had sore feet after this hike for like three weeks. I think I did like some kind of permanent damage because my right foot still kind of hurts when I like lean on it wrong. Um, but hey, we got a good photo out of it, so uh, worth it, maybe. But there were definitely points in that hike when I was thinking to myself, surely I could have done this better. Like, surely. Why did I do this to myself? Surely I could have made this a better experience. 
And I think if we're honest, there are definitely times in our walk with God when we ask ourselves that question. Surely I could be doing this better. Surely things could be better than this. Surely I should be more prepared for this. Surely things could be better. And that's what today's message is all about. Because in Jesus, we find the best way to be human. In Jesus, we find the answer to that question. And so I'm going to pray, and we're going to get into this message, and we're going to unpack today how this idea of the way communicates this new way to be human. So would you join me now as I pray? Father in heaven, I thank you, and I praise you that we can be here this morning, and we can unpack your word together. I ask that you would rid me of myself, that your spirit would fill this place, fill every single one of our hearts, so that we can be receptive to the message you have for us. I ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So a bit of context to that word, the way. Uh, it has like a couple of different meanings. So we're just going to unpack those real quick before we get into it. Um, the way can kind of mean three things, okay? And the first thing that it can mean is it can mean the goal of this life, as in the, the end goal, the, the, the place where we're going, the way, right? That's, that's one meaning. Another potential meaning of this word is it can mean the path that we walk on. So like, say we've got Metricon Stadium down the road there. Um, the way there, I could say, all right, you get to these lights out here, uh, you turn left, and it's just there on your left a few hundred meters up the road. That's the way there. Or I could say, um, you, rather than turning left for the lights, you go right, you go up the motorway, you take Smith Street exit, then you go down Olsen Ave, then you come back onto Narang Broad Beach Road, and then it's just there on your right. Both ways to get there, I had to memorize that there, because that's, man, that's a lot of roads. Um, but those are both ways to get there, right? And so it's talking about the path, like, to where you're going. But then throughout Scripture, there's kind of like an extra meaning that kind of surrounds this word as well. And that is this. It is not just the goal of this life or the path we walk on, but it's how we walk. It's how we get there, right? It's the kind of attitude or the demeanor that we take as we're on the way. And so we're going to open up the Bibles now and go to the book of Mark. And in Mark, we're going to go to chapter 1. So in your Bibles, if you haven't read much of the Bible before, there's two main sections. You've got the Old Testament, the New Testament. Mark is the second book of the New Testament, right? And the New Testament starts when Jesus enters onto the scene. And Mark is one of those first four books that unpacks the life and ministry and teachings of Jesus. And we're going to go to the very start of the book of Mark. So if you find the book, there's going to be a big word Mark at the top. and There's going to be some numbers on there. We'll talk about those in just a moment. But in the book of Mark is where we're going to start. So the big numbers, the chapters, small numbers of verses, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. Let's go. If you don't have a Bible, it's on the screen behind me here. And what I've done is I've highlighted where this word, the way, comes up so that you guys can, can, can see it. But it says this. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. From the very beginning of the book of Mark, we see this word way pop up straight away. And it's linked with the book of Isaiah, which is an Old Testament book, which talks a lot about Jesus and what his ministry would be about. And as I did some study and prep for this message, I went back and I started reading through Isaiah. And what I started to find was that this idea of the way is like woven all through the book of Isaiah as well. And so as we go to Isaiah, you see like passages like Isaiah 40 verse 3, it says, listen, it's a voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make straight a highway through the wasteland for our God. Or, or verses like this, which is God speaking to Israel. He says, I will lead blind, in, blind Israel down a new path, guiding them along an unfamiliar way. I will brighten the darkness before them and smooth out the road ahead of them. Yes, I will indeed do these things. I will not forsake them. And so there's kind of this like, we'll call it a thematic link. It's like there's a bridge between Isaiah and Mark. And the, the bridge is kind of formed by this word, the way. And so when you read the book of Mark, every time you see the word, the way, usually Mark has been very deliberate about how he's used it. And he's used it to give you like a callback to Isaiah and to passages like this, which talk about why Jesus came. And what that means is that when we see the word, the way, we need to think straight away. This is something where Jesus is central to what is going on here. That's what we need to bring to mind. And in the book of Mark, the very next time the word, the way, appears, hodos, is in Mark chapter 8. So if you have a Bible, let's turn to Mark 8. And it's in verse 27. This is the very next time that the word, the way, pops up. 
And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they told him. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others they say you're one of the prophets. But he asked them, but who do you say that I am? While they're on the way, Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Christ. Jesus reveals to his disciples that he is the Christ on the way. The end of that passage, we don't have it up here, but Jesus says he told them not to tell anyone because it was not his time yet. So we kind of get the impression the disciples have figured out who Jesus is. And this is the first time that we see Jesus revealing his Messiahhood, we'll call it, that he is God, that he is who he claims to be. He is the one whom all these verses in Isaiah are pointing to, and he reveals that on the way. And what this tells us, it just again, it just reaffirms it again, is that the way is centered on Jesus. That when we come across this word, what it talks about and what it is centered on is the idea that Jesus should be the center of this passage. Jesus should be the center of how we understand this passage. And it's a beautiful word that is used throughout the Bible, and it continually talks about that. You might be thinking, okay, this is all kind of cool little links and connections and stuff, but what does it mean in practice? Like, how does it actually connect with my experience? And there's a beautiful story in uh, Mark 10, and we're going to unpack that in just a moment. And in that story, what we're going to see is, the, is how the way is lived out, okay? Uh, this word, the way, and have Jesus at, Jesus at the center, how it's actually lived out. So Tom is going to play a video now, and this video is going to uh, paint a picture of this story, then we're going to read it, and we're going to unpack it. Right. I'm kind of glad I didn't have sand because remember we had to pay really close attention to what was going on there. Um, that story is the story of a man named Bartimaeus. And as we go to the book of Mark, chapter 10, what we see is this story in real life. So I want you to try and think of those images as we're reading these verses. It says, And they came to Jericho. This is Jesus and his followers. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. The word there is hodos, the way. Sitting by the way. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent, to be quiet. But he cried out all the more. He cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called to the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up. He is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. 
Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. It's my prayer that every single one of us in this room, no matter where we find ourselves, will be able to see ourselves in this story. Maybe you find yourself in a position today where you're kind of an observer, where you're observing from a distance this whole Christianity, Jesus, faith, religion thing. Maybe you're like Bartimaeus and there's parts of, you, parts of your life that you want to be better and you don't really know how to fix them. And you see this religion thing passing by or that's happening around you and you're just observing. Maybe you're at a space where you, you realize there's something about Jesus, there's something different about him that, that could make all the difference in your life. And maybe if you find yourself in that space, you started to, to try and cry out to him. You started to ask questions. You, you started to investigate what this is all about. Maybe you've been doing that for a little while, but you're not getting anything back. And you feel like, what's the point? It must be all useless. If Jesus isn't speaking back to me, why am I putting in this effort? Or maybe other people are saying, no, that's not how God works. That's not how this works. You have to do it this way. Maybe other people are pushing you back and rebuking you, like in the story of Bartimaeus, and saying, no, that that's not what God is about. Maybe you need to be encouraged and empowered today to continue that pursuit of Jesus. Because I guarantee when you call out to Jesus, he hears you. It's really interesting. This story is also uh, found in the book of Luke as well. And it says that from the moment Jesus entered Jerusalem, Bartimaeus started crying out to him for healing. Whereas Mark says that he's not healed until Jesus is leaving, not Jerusalem, sorry, leaving Jericho. And the logical conclusion we have to draw from that is that from the moment Jesus entered to the moment he left Jericho, Bartimaeus was crying out to him for healing. There's something about that persistent faith there that I think is really beautiful and something that we can reflect on in our own journeys and think, man, did I ask for something once and then expect God to answer it and then he did it and I got really angry at him? Or did I have the faith to continue asking and to continue praying and trusting that in his way and in his timing, he would answer that prayer? Maybe like in the story of Bartimaeus, you've, 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 you've come to, to see Jesus and, 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 and maybe you feel like Jesus is calling you to him. Maybe for some time you've been putting it off or been just listening out and working out what to do with this. But when you go to Jesus, you realize that he is calling you. In Revelation, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens that door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. Jesus wants a relationship with every single one of us. And just like he called Bartimaeus, he calls every single one of us every single day. He wants us to be in a relationship with him, to know him, to be with him. Maybe you, you find yourself in a relationship with Jesus, but there's a particular part of your life that you need help with. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's with your studies. Maybe it's with a dependency or an addiction. Maybe it's, maybe it's in, in, in your workplace. Maybe it's with a specific people. Maybe like Bartimaeus, you could pray specifically for that thing and give it to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need help with this. Maybe you're waiting for that miracle. Maybe you're waiting for that healing. No matter where you find yourself on this journey along the way, I can promise you this, that the way forward is found in Jesus. That the way forward is found in Jesus. Because the way is centered on Jesus. It's all about him. And I love that story of Bartimaeus because it, it says that once he'd received that miracle, Jesus says, hey, go your way. But Bartimaeus realized that his way had no meaning or value or purpose without following Jesus. And so it says rather than going his way, he went and followed Jesus on the way. That rather than going down his own path and doing things his own way, he decided that it was more uh, valuable and, and it was more purpose-driven to follow Jesus on his way. And so we come to, well, what might it look like if I were to apply this to my life? How can, how can I make this a, a reality where I find myself? You know, we said at the start that the way can talk about the goal of this life, the path we walk on, and then how we get there. And so when we talk about walking the way, here's what it means. It means that we are walking towards Jesus, 
that the goal of our life isn't, isn't the, the normal ideas that the world has about success or about a relationship or about body image or about results or anything like that. The goal of this life should be centered around Jesus. So that we're walking towards Jesus. And then we talk about the path that we walk on. Right? When we're walking the way, we, we say that we're walking with Jesus. That we, the path we walk on isn't our own, but it's the path that Jesus has for us. And what that looks like is that's in our decisions, in our conversations, in our questioning. Jesus is a part of it all. Because when we're walking with Jesus, we're walking the path that he wants us to be walking on. And then finally, when we're walking the way, we are walking like Jesus. How have you built your life around the rhythms, around the, uh, around the practices, around the disciplines that Jesus lived out? This is what it looks like to walk the way, church. It's that we're walking towards Jesus, we're walking with Jesus, and we're walking like Jesus. And so as we reflect on these right now, I want to ask you a few questions. I just want you to, to reflect on these as, as I bring this message to a close. How are you walking towards Jesus? What are the goals that you have in your life? Is Jesus a part of those? Should he be a bigger part of those goals? To what extent is Jesus the end to which you are walking? How are you walking with Jesus? What does that look like in your life? How often do you pray before making decisions? Yeah, so good. How are we walking like Jesus? What kind of passage, what kind of uh, practices do we live out each day, each week, each month, each year to make sure that our lives reflect the way that Jesus lived his life? Are our lives de just defined by busyness, by, by worry, by fear, by doubt? How have we taken the yoke of Jesus and put it on? Jesus says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So how are we walking like Jesus? Is Sabbath, is, for you, is that a day of stress, of worry, of burden, of weight? Or is it a day of rest, of stopping, of reflecting, of relationship building, filled with joy, filled with peace? How might we better walk towards Jesus? How might we better walk with Jesus? And how might we better walk like Jesus? Because when we're reflecting on these things, when we're talking about these things, we start walking the way without even trying. Because this is what it means. When we build our whole lives on and around Jesus, that's what walking the way is all about. And so church, as I pray now, I invite you to just bring the answer to one of those questions to God. Ask the whole heap there. Maybe one of them really connected with where you find yourself right now. I invite you just to bring that with me to lay at the foot of the cross that answer we're going to pray and we're going to ask for God for healing for restoration we're going to ask God that he might move in a new and a powerful way in each of our lives so would you join me now as I pray Father in heaven I praise you for who you are Lord that you are a God who took on flesh and dwelt among us Lord, that, that you presented for us a new way to be human. That we didn't have to ask ourselves that question, you know, surely things can be better. Surely I, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. But we can look to Jesus and in Jesus we can find what it truly means to be human. We can find true meaning, true life. We can find true love. We can find true purpose. We can find true peace, true satisfaction. And Lord, we've each got something that we want to lay at the foot of your cross now. And we're bringing it to mind in this moment and we're just saying, God, it is yours. Lord, I believe that there are relationships that will be healed. I believe that there are tough situations that will be restored. I believe there are financial situations that you're going to move into and move in. Lord, I believe there is grief and hurt and pain that you are going to come alongside. I'm believing that you will work in a new and powerful way because that is what you promised to do can, you will, and you do more than we could ask or think or imagine. And Lord, I pray that each day as we follow you, that you might remain the center 
of our goals, that you might be the one to whom we're walking to, that you might define the way there and you might show us what it means each day to follow after you. Lord, this is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus who is coming soon. Jesus is the way. He's the way to heaven. And if you're excited about going home, and not just to lunch today, but to the real home of heaven, stand to your feet with me as we sing our last song. do find who we are truly in you, Jesus. We know this world is not our final home, God, but we find that in you. And it is my prayer that we would not forget that this week, that in the midst of all the chaos, uncertainty, and everything else that goes on, that we might remember we have a home that is in you, Jesus, and a home that is not of this world, a home that is beyond this life. Lord, may that be the defining reality for us, Lord, as we walk the way each day. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thanks so much for joining us today. You can take a seat. Just to wrap up, if you would like prayer today, if you would like someone to pray over you, there'll be a whole bunch of people down here in the prayer corner, just on the right of my of me, your left. Um, feel free to come there. And there's going to be people to pray for you, to pray over you, whatever you need prayer for today. If you are a visitor or a guest, you're here for the first time, we've got guest packs out the back there, so make sure to say good day to Trudy on your way out. We've got a gift we'd love for you to have. It's also Pathfinders this afternoon. We've got a baptism at 2 p.m. Out of, uh, out of the spit, just on the left past SeaWorld. So make sure to be there, support Waha and her decision. Next week is Commitment Day. And if you need more information or you want to get in on that, please come speak to myself, speak to Pastor Mike. Like you said before, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that, uh, that we can have you be a part of that next week. So that's all from us today. Uh, be blessed. Have an amazing week. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks, church.